Hi, my name's Josh Green. I'm an enterprise solutions engineer from the Duo Security Business Unit of Cisco. Today we're going to talk a little bit about network access. We'll start by looking at the way it's done traditionally and then talk about how Zero Trust can both improve the security of your infrastructure as well as improving the user experience for your end users. So in the traditional model, we've got our apps that are potentially in the cloud and we've got our apps that are and servers and services that are on-premise. And users who are going to try to access those on-premise services traditionally use a VPN. So here in the DMZ of our network, most often there's a server. And that server is providing VPN services that users will dial into. So here's our VPN. And our user is going to connect to that. Now we're going to do some kind of verification there. Traditionally, that was just username and pass password. Then two-factor authentication was invented that helped us to do a little bit of extra verification on our users. And now we have what we call MFA, or multi-factor authentication, where we might be looking not just at the user, but also at their device. However, regardless of what we're verifying and how we're verifying it, once that's done, this VPN is going to give this user an IP address. At that point, the user is effectively on the internal network, and they can start accessing applications and services. And they can go, really, wherever they want. Additionally, one of the challenges with VPN from a security point of view is, say I've logged into this SSH server, I can now use that to pivot to other places in the network. And unless I've got something else on the network here that's providing some kind of mitigating control, that can become a real dangerous vector for a potential cyber attack. Because attackers oftentimes don't want what they find on the first machine they arrive on on the internal network. They actually want to move around the network looking for things like payment card data. So what we're going to do with Zero Trust is we're going to look at how this network architecture changes, and we're going to talk about how that helps not only pr improve security, but also the end user experience. So now we're going to talk about how this changes in the world of Zero Trust. So not only do we have to address what's going on on-premise, but the other thing is that in that previous model when we were talking about the VPN, we didn't address this side of the picture at all, where users are actually going directly to cloud applications. That means that they're going to have different usernames and passwords. The requirements for the security of these applications could be completely different. And we don't get any visibility in that model as to what's going on here. And that's really a problem because as, as companies move towards cloud-first architectures, a lot more sensitive stuff is being stored up here. So we really need to get visibility into what's going on there. So these are things that are addressed by the Zero Trust model. So in this model, we're going to put two things here. The first thing is going to be a reverse proxy. And the reverse proxy's job is going to be to broker that access into the internal network that we had previously with the VPN. The other thing we're going to put here is a single sign-on gateway that's going to use a protocol called SAML to help us sign into those cloud apps that we really weren't addressing before. So these two are going to talk to each other, and we'll talk about how that works. So now what's going to happen is our user wants to access something on-premise, just like they did before with the VPN. What they're actually going to connect to via their client or their browser is the reverse proxy. The reverse proxy is going to send them to the single sign-on gateway. The single sign-on gateway is going to talk to some source of identity. That might be in the cloud. It might be on-premise. In this case, We'll say it's on-premise, so it's going to talk to our directory on-premise to authenticate that user. Now what happens next depends whether that application is in the cloud or on-premise. If it's in the cloud, there's no need for this user to ever come anywhere near our internal network. We're going to send them right back out to a cloud application via the single sign-on gateway. But there's a really key change here. Because we've done that authentication on a gateway we control, we get to determine what policies are applied for access to these cloud applications. And this actually works just as well if that user has gone to the application in the cloud first. Because of the way that SAML single sign-on works, these applications will know that we want to use our gateway to do the authentication. And they'll send the user right there for us. So that allows us to apply the same policies to our cloud apps that we would like to apply on-premise. So now what happens with those on-premise apps? Well, when we saw that it was a cloud app, we just sent the user right back out to the internet. No need to come to the internal network. 
Now, however, if we know that that user is trying to access something on the internal network, the proxy won't send them out to the internet. It will actually tunnel them to each individual app that they want to access. So now this has two really fundamental changes to how we do the networking. The first is that from the end user's point of view, they can't tell the difference between what's in the cloud and what's on premise. They're going to authenticate exactly the same in both cases. When they connect here, they don't need to use a VPN client. So they're going to feel that this web application internally hosted is actually exposed to the internet. Same with this SSH server. So the user experience is actually much, much easier, and our non-technical end users will simply think everything's in the cloud. Now there's a huge advantage for security as well. What we're going to do on the internal network here is we're going to say that none of these applications will accept any connections that didn't come through the proxy, which means that although this user may be authorized to come into the SSH application, if they were to try to do that same pivot where they moved down here or went off to some other application, we're not going to accept that connection. So now what we're doing is we're verifying not just who is the user, who is their device, but also what are the individual things they should be able to do. And the same is true in the cloud, right? Because we're getting the ability to verify that within our own gateway as well. So this represents a pretty fundamental shift um, in, in how we're going to do the networking. Uh, it allows us to simplify from an end user point of view how the login process works while also securing things. And that is the first step towards a true zero trust model.